In this video, we're going to apply the settings from our wedge test to our top part of our fountain. Now that we know those settings from our wedge test, we want to apply that to this fountain here. So I'm going to go to the flip solver and go to collisions, and I'm going to turn on stick on collision. Um, I like the stick scale to be a bit stronger. Let's try 0.25. Uh, um, I wanted the stick bias to be a bit less, maybe 0.25 as well. And um, actually, no, I want this to be less. Let's put that to 0.1. Leave the stick scale where it is. Let's bring the stick bias down a bit. I wanted this to stay high and that to stay low. So let's put that to 0.1. So these are kind of the effects that I, the uh, numbers I like for my wedge tests. The other thing I'm going to do is just go to the setup and we'll put in um, four sub steps. I think that's enough um, to get the kind of fidelity that I was after. Um, let's just check the resolution here. Let's bring this down to 0 0.0002. Let's make that really small so we get a, a lot of fidelity out of that. So what I'm going to do is, oh, hello, what happened there? Let me just undo. So that reconnects. There we go. Let's just save. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and I'm going to write this um, cache out to disk. And again, that's going to take a little while. So all I want to do is pop these little values in there um, from our wedge test. So these numbers, all of that's good. Anything else I want to change while I'm at it? No, I don't think so. We've got our, our velocity being animated in, which is quite nice. Just check our bounds is doing the whole thing. So, um, so I want to do the whole fountain now. Let's select that. So let's check out the bounds. Oh, no, it looks a bit shallow there. Was this the deeper one? Yeah, it was. Let's plug that one in. Instead, there we go. If we have a look at our solver here. Just take a second or two to calculate that. If we come down here, we can preview that, mount that on there. There we go. How many particles have we got? About two and a half million. That should be sufficient. So uh, what I'm going to do is just save again. And I'm going to set this off, actually. Save to disk in background. And um, what we'll find is, let's just get this going. What we'll find is... Um, We'll look at the memory. Now, the higher the res, you can, the flip will handle as high resolution as you want to go. The main limit with flip or doing detailed flip simulations is RAM usage. Um, the more particles you have, the more volumes you have, the uh, bigger the um, RAM footprint you're going to be using. And um, that's okay if you've got a lot, of, I've got a lot of RAM here, as you can see, 128 gig, so I don't mind. Um, which can be a bit of an issue, especially if you want to do complicated simulations. Um, imagine this waterfall wasn't just coming from the top to the bottom. There was like three three tiers to it or even four tiers to it. Um, we wouldn't be able to simulate the whole thing in one go. So what I'm getting at, look, already the, the RAM is creeping up to 30 gig. <coughs> so if you've got a, 30, um, a 32 gig machine, this resolution is probably not attainable you'd have to lower the res in order to simulate it you've got 48 gig machine you'll be absolutely fine um, although as we run to the sim and make more particles we might hit the 48 gig ram limit so what i'm suggesting is i'm going to let this one play through let's have a look at a couple of the frames there we go so um it's only about two million i'm going to let this one cache through and then we'll come and view it and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you all the technique um, of how we can actually split this up. The advantage of splitting this up means we can simulate um, some elements a bit faster because we're breaking it down. Plus, we can um, have more of a local high resolution because uh, we're breaking the simulation into parts and simulating each part separately. And um, it will also use less RAM, which is a good thing. So if you've got less RAM on your machine, breaking down a, a, a high resolution sim like this into smaller parts will means you can process it on your um, machine with less resources. So what I'm, as I said, I'm going to let this one simulate through and then we'll redo this again by breaking down the simulation. So we'll simulate this top bit first and then we'll simulate, uh, cache that out and get that cache to then simulate with this bottom bit. And then I'll show you how we can join those together.
And this is a good strategy, like I say, if you had very complicated sims where you wanted quite high res, you can break them down into uh, the separate parts, which means they'll overall use less RAM and stuff. So already, look, we're creeping up at 34 gig. And probably by the end of it, we'll creep up to something like 48 or something, or maybe a bit more. So look, here we go. As we slowly step forwards, we can see the simulation doing its thing. We've got about two and a half million particles. So um, where are we now with 34 gig of RAM? So it's slowly creeping up frame by frame, one gig at a time. So I'm going to stop the video um, for the moment and let this play through. And then we'll have a look at the result at the end. And then we'll look at how we can break this down and simulate it more easily on a machine with less resources. So the cache has been going for quite a while now. Um, if we have a look, it's taken up to 42 gig of RAM. If you've got 46, it's really pushing it. And uh, it's taking a while, obviously, because we're simulating um, about two and a half million particles. Um, I'm actually going to stop this now. So let me just click cancel cook. And you'll see we've got 136 frames. So um, what I'm going to do is just flip book. 135 frames. So let's come to a bit more of a side angle. And um, before I just flip book it, let me just template. Where's the collider? Template the collider to kind of see what's going on at this edge here. Just remember, that's what we did with the stickiness. So um, we'll just let the flip book run. So as I was saying, this has taken quite a lot of RAM and quite a lot of time. So um, I'm not actually going to do it this way. I'm going to break this down into um, the top half of the sim and then we'll run it to the bottom half. And that's a good strategy when you want to sort of do large or high resolution sims, but you've got low resources or they're just a lot of water and you, you need to break it down. So let's have a look at that, how that's going. And look, you see as the water's running out, it's starting to cling on the edge and be pulled in a bit. And that was the effect we're after. And we got that just right because of the wedges, which really sped things up. So there we go. That's given us the effect we're after. And we see it's coming down and splashing in the pool here. So the other advantage of splitting this up is we could have different solvers. Um, I'm not sure if you're aware in Flip, we've got either the splashy solver or a, um, um, what's the other one they call? It's swirly solver. That's it. So. Um, so we could have a splashy one up here and a swirly one down there and see what the differences are. So we see a little bit splashing over the sides and the edges, which is fine. We can live with that. But that's the effect I was after, this little subtle clinginess here. So as we're going through, we see it's coming down and it's splashing in the base here. And we'll create some, uh, use the white water, the new white water solver, the new one for 20, to create some bubbles and some interaction, another interaction in the bottom. So um, I'm quite pleased with that. Um, this main test was to get the stickiness right. And um, if I want to do many iterations, this is taking quite a long time to simulate. And uh, I might want to do iterations on the top half and then iterations on the bottom half. And by breaking it down, we can sort of uh, make that process a little simpler. So I'm quite liking that. Actually, let me just shut that down. So we go through, we see we've got. Um, Our sim going on there and our liquid coming through. Cool. So um, that looked very interesting. So like I said, um, what I'm going to do is just spring clean this up a little bit. Let's just bring all this stuff over here, create a little box around it. We'll call this a uh, big sim. Oh, let me just uh, give that a color. So this over here. We got that as a reference. And uh, what I want to do really is, um, like I say, I'm going to steal this network, make a copy of it, and then we'll break this down. So we'll save that for the next the next um, video. We'll break this down into um, two separate simulations, and I'll show you how we can join them together. Like I say, that's a good strategy for when you've got large simulations or you just want to break something down, have much higher res locally. So we'll look at that in the next video.